Good morning. Merry Christmas to you. So good to have you here. If you are visiting with us, we're especially happy that you are here today. We hope that you feel loved and at home here. And to our friends who are worshiping online with us, we love you and we miss you and we can hardly wait until we see you again. On the back of the bulletin are instructions for worship today that were current as of Wednesday morning when this was put together. And then watch out for the whiplash, it all changed again. <laughs> and um, we were allowed to be in uh, centers of worship without masks if you're fully vaccinated for the COVID-19 virus. If you are not fully vaccinated, you should be wearing a mask then that covers your nose and mouth. And uh, boy, we're just trying to stay ahead of the game, keeping everyone healthy, aren't we? I watch as my friends in New York keep posting my show shut down, my show shut down, and my heart just uh, is, is in knots. And so we want to make sure we're keeping our congregation safe. And uh, I'm so thankful you're here today. So whether you wear a mask or not, if you're vaccinated, your choice. We want to start off this morning singing together. It's hymn number 133 in your hymnal. If you want to hold the book, the words will also be up on a screen or um, for those online, uh, they'll be on the screen for you. Let's stand together as we sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. standing while we recite our words of witness. They're on your bulletin. They're also up on the screens. Let's join together with our words of witness. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, goodness, and love, and in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord and Savior, who for us and our salvation lived and died and rose again and lives evermore, and in the Holy Spirit, who takes the things of Christ and reveals them to us, renewing, comforting, 
and inspiring our souls. We are united in striving to know the will of God as taught in the Holy Scriptures and in our purpose to walk in the ways of the Lord, made known or to be made known to us. Before you sit down, find someone that you can wave to or ask permission before you hug or shake hands, but take a minute and to greet our friends online. Good morning. Today we relight the first three candles of the Advent wreath, the candles of hope, peace, and joy. And now we light the fourth candle of Advent. This is the candle of love. Jesus demonstrated the ultimate gift of love as he gave his life so that we can be at peace with God, others, and ourselves. Advent is a time to love as God loves. In John chapter 13, verse 34 through 35, we read, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Let's pray. Teach us to love, O Lord, as we prepare for the celebration of Jesus' birth. Fill our hearts with love for your people throughout the world. May we demonstrate to others your love, that they may experience the love of Christ through us. Amen. Thank you, Jenny family. What a gift you are to us. Thanks so much. We want to share with you some things going on in our church. First of all, Christmas Eve, we have a service at 5 o'clock. And it's going to be really wonderful because we're combining with the Restoration Congregation. And we'll be here in the sanctuary together. So 5 o'clock on Christmas Eve. We hope that you can um, join us. And it will be online also. But we're hoping um, that we can have a sanctuary full of uh, happy people ready to celebrate the birth of our Savior. I also would like to call your attention to our amazing Ed Yarnell over there. Um, they gave the ugly sweater Christmas, what did you call it? Chris, not concert. There you go, I knew I'd mess it up. Um, which I hear was absolutely amazing. I'm so sorry I couldn't be there. I had two nutcrackers yesterday, but I heard that Ed's stuff was amazing. Ed, I also want to thank you and Nelda for jumping in um, and rescuing us these last couple of weeks. You guys are uh, real gifts to us. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> On 
Also, um, oh, Chuck's making his way up here. I just want um, us as a congregation to continue to pray for families here in our church um, the, that are experiencing extreme illness, broken bones, all kinds of things are happening. And um, if you'll just keep our families uplifted, the Hodges, the Berries, and I know there are more, uh, but just keep those people in your daily prayers. I want to recognize someone um, who has shed new light on our congregation. If you will turn around and face Olive Street, you will notice that the, the stained glass windows, probably for the first time in 40 years, are shown as they should be shown. And Mr. Weiner and his wife as a Christmas present to us, removed the uh, ugly, overgrown and rotten cypress tree trees which were blocking those windows. <laughs> and he, he does not get the uh, Luther Burbank Award, unfortunately, this year. The arborist from the city will probably be by and say that we've removed too many trees but again, thank you, Alan, your wife, for a wonderful Christmas present for us. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> We're going to continue in worship, but we have a little change. I guess lots of things have changed on our bulletin for today. Instead of special music, we're going to join together singing hymn number 118 of the Father's love begotten. And again, you can hold a hymnal or you can look at the screens, either one. But let's stand together as we sing hymn number 118. Please be seated. This is the time in our service when we would usually take the offering. 
but we um, ask you to instead continue your faithfulness by giving in the basket in the back or online or sending it to the church, whatever works best for you. We're so thankful for your generosity, especially this time of year. We have a special Christmas offering too. I hope you got your letter about that. So thank you for being such an amazing congregation that continues to care for this church and for our community. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, what joy it brings us to watch and wait for the celebration of your son's birth. It's such an incredible time of year, and we thank you for the ways you continue to make yourself real and visible to us during this time. Please give us ears to hear and eyes to see what more you want for us during this Christmas season, whether it's a deeper understanding of and appreciation for your miraculous birth or a nudging from your Holy Spirit to give to someone in need. Lord, we pray today for those among us in this congregation and those in the world around us who find it hard to celebrate this time of year, who have lost loved ones, who don't have enough, who are frightened by a recent diagnosis or fighting a health battle. Lord, we have the deepest desire to be your hands this Christmas to reach these and other people, showing them that you came to earth to bring love, peace, healing, and a perfect path to unity with our Heavenly Father. We are here with open hearts, welcoming that precious child in. Ignite creativity in our souls that we might find new ways to worship you this year, new ways to show your love to those around us, and new ways to experience the miracle of our Savior's birth. We ask all these things now as we pray that most perfect prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. ships come sailing in on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day in the morning. And what was in those ships so free on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day? And what was in those ships so free on Christmas Day? Christmas Day, on Christmas Day, the Virgin Mary and Christ were there on Christmas Day in the morning. And all the bells on earth shall ring on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. And all the bells on earth shall ring on Christmas Day in the morning.
This morning's scripture is Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7, and it can be found on page 1073 in your pew Bibles. Listen to the word of ending war, of conquering all that enslaves, all that hearts, all that harms forever. Now, how do we get there? Well, that's what life is about, is finding out how we get there in the story of God's redemption. But make no mistake, the end of our story is already written. It ends with light. It ends with no danger. It ends with no war. It ends with peace. A real Messiah who comes to live a life, a real life, a life marked and bounded by time. But the impact of that life, changing reality forever and ensuring us our story ends in the everlasting presence of God where there is no night, there is no war, there's only light, there's only us with God, we his people, in him our God. And Isaiah says, behold, a child is given to us. I want to end with that word given because you're going to give some gifts this year. We're, you know, you and me, we're at the stage of the life where we're more gift givers than gift receivers. So I want to talk to you as a gift giver. The worst thing you can hear when you give a gift from someone is, I'll make this up to you. I'll pay you back for this. Like, that's, no, that's a payment. That's not a gift. A gift doesn't come with expectations. I'm not giving you a gift to obligate you to give me one back. I'm giving you a gift out of love to show you that you're seen, that you're known. You know, that if someone, if you give someone a gift and they get emotional and they say, thank you, I, this is more than I could ever imagine. This is more than I could ever ask for. The sense of you saw me, you, you, you recognized my needs, you saw what I, is most important to me and you gave me the perfect gift. Thank you. That is the only proper response to a good gift that we're given is a heart full of gratitude, of thanksgiving. And Isaiah says, a son is given. It's a gift. You don't earn it. When we come to the table together and take communion, it's not because we earned it. It's not because we deserved it. It's not because we merited enough favor that week by doing all the right things that now we get to receive. No, we, the table's given to us. Jesus is given to us. And so the season always goes by too fast. Always feel like it slips through our finger fingers. A big part of that is because of all the ways that marketing and consumerism constantly drums up in us, you're incomplete. It makes us perpetually dissatisfied with all the good things we have. That's, That's our curse. We have everything except for the capacity to enjoy what we have. So maybe this Christmas, the most rebellious and countercultural thing we can do in our age is to stop and give thanks. Let's pray. Father, this Christmas, we do not want to lose sight of the gift prophesied so long ago through Isaiah, of a God, of you coming to us as a small infant, coming to bring light into our dark world, coming to bring a lasting peace, and coming to ensure that our story ends in your presence. May this bring us hope this holiday season. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Please receive your benediction now this last Sunday of Advent from 2 Corinthians 13. Finally, my brothers and sisters, may you rejoice. May you strive for full restoration. May you encourage one another and be of one mind. And may you live in peace. May the God of love and peace be with you. Amen. <laughs>